Oh my goodness. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. It's me and Rocky hanging out. Yeah, let's put on a little Christmas in the city and chat. Oh, I got some great things to talk about real quick. Everybody's doing good. Uh, so Rocky's a bearded dragon. It's a big story behind him. I never wanted a I never wanted a bearded dragon. But I rescued him, yeah. Something in my mind, my guardian angels, possibly, told me to go in the backyard. They said, go on out back. I didn't want to go out back. And they kept telling me to go out back, go out back, go out back. Look around. So, I went out there. I looked around, I couldn't find nothing. There's old ratty old mulberry tree and apartment complex and big yard where the kids could play. There wasn't nothing to find. Then I saw some clover on the ground at the corner of my eye. And I looked down and there at my feet, Rocky laying in the grass and the clover smiling, looking up at me. Yeah. That was two years ago. He's, he was two years old about then. Now he's probably four or five. Yeah, he's very good, very good boy. Him and Riley play together like you wouldn't believe. Yeah. You wanna get down? You like the light? Yeah, he's just beautiful. Yeah, so anyway, I wanted to talk about a couple of things. Start off on the list with children. Yeah, people start relationships and relationships all the time. So you have a lot of people, single parents, and you know, like me, I'll use me for an example. Um, I had a relationship with a woman who had some children. When I got involved, the child was four, going on five. I taught her how to tie her shoes. I taught her how to ride a bike. I taught her everything that I could possibly teach her that a father would teach a child. And I spent a lot of time with that child, in particular, six years. So, when my issues of drinking and her issues of gambling collided, the relationship fell apart. So, that ended my relationship with the child. Well, that's still a relationship. Regardless if me and the mother can get along, I have an established relationship as a parental figure in that child's life. And, um, you know, that's something that's not being considered when people talk about relationships and children and getting to see their kids and all these fathers. Well, you have to think about kids that aren't yours that you build a relationship with. And um, it makes getting involved in a relationship dangerous. You as a parent of the child, you want to be, you know, you want to bring home somebody good. And then you find out repeatedly that you're bringing on people that you find out are not good. One of the ways to tell 
if a person is worth your time as a single parent is by the attention that they give the child and the interest that they take in that child. That is more important than the ear candy they give you and telling you all the things that you want to hear. Always have to think about the kids. And so we need to champion for these children that are getting lost in the relationship shuffles. Yeah, people need to think about that. You know, the, the destruction, the pain that I have over having given to that child and still should still be giving to that child. So, you know, that's Sienna. You know, Sienna, if you're out there, you do see this video. I think about you all the time. And uh, I've always been easy to find. So, no matter what happens between the two parents, the children need to still know that they're cared for. And that's very important. People need to become more selfless. And through being selfless, you'll find is one of the keys to being happy. When you stop thinking about yourself, because everything you need, you will get. Yeah. For today and by doing what you do today is what builds up your insurance for tomorrow your seeds that you're planting in the garden yeah speaking of gardens marijuana marijuana is an important herb and uh, it's being exploited um, it's not being respected and we need to be a little bit more discreet about our use of it, you know, around children, for instance, or around people that don't use it. You know, they need to go, now that everybody's got their pot, they need to respect that and go back to, to enjoying it. Yeah. And part of the enjoyment is in the growing of it. If you're going to smoke weed, the best thing to do is to grow your own. You know where it came from. You know what's on it. You know what it took to grow it. And through all that effort that you put into growing it is where you develop even more appreciation for the very substance of the yield. And in order to get the substance from the yield, you have to battle pests. If you're growing outdoors, especially if you're growing outdoors, this is about growing pot outdoors. I want people to stop and take a deep breath and think about their marijuana growing operation. Whether you're legal or not, um, neem oil is great to use for aphid control, pest control. But we have an issue with the honeybees. And if we have a bunch of rogue marijuana growers out there trying to grow so they can make a profit, they're not stopping to consider the damage possibilities to the nature. If you're going to be growing your outdoors, you have to use your pesticides when the bees are not active. So you have to learn about the bee activity and when the time of day is best to use the neem oil. Obviously at night would be a great time. Which reminds me of that old R.E.M. song, Gardening at Night. I think that was on the eponymous album. Yeah, yeah, it was. And um, let's see, what else was there? Oh, yeah, I got the pigeons. The pigeons are doing great. I got the loft built in the <coughs> garage. <coughs> it's got some fairly decent square footage for eight birds. And uh, now I've got a recept, what I'm calling the reception cage, is the, the cage that's fastened to the outside of the garage where they can come to and, throw, to and from through the window. There's a window with a broken pane of glass, which makes an ideal spot to put a door so I don't have to cut a hole in the wall. So I'll alter the window, I'll put a door panel in there so the pigeons can get in and out of the pen and into the cage, and then... Um, I'm, just a couple of days here, I'll be done with the whole yard. I'll have my aviary complete, and I'll be ready to put the birds out there when the time is right. 
So very excited about that. But I learned something about chicken wire. Now, anybody out there uh, that's grown up on a farm or had chickens or whatever knows dealing with chicken wire is a pain in the ass. It's, it's uh, hard to do. You need a hand. You need somebody to help you. Well, I don't have anybody to help me, and I've always learned how to do stuff by myself, especially after working for my buddy Paul, Paul Jensen, who needed help with everything all the time. So I was always helping him. So I improved by what I learned by providing him assistance. I learned how to eliminate the need for that assistance. And when it comes to chicken wire, what I've discovered, and maybe I'm late to the party, maybe everybody else already knows this, and I'm like Gilligan on Gilligan's Island with the Frisbee. But you take the chicken wire on an open staircase, a set of stairs, even if it's just three stairs, and you got a landing, of course, to work with. You unroll the chicken wire. It wants to roll right back up. But if you, you bend it a little bit to start with and lay it on the steps, and in between the trad noses, you can push the wire, and it will poke against the arc the opposite way, and you'll be able to bend it. And it, it works out really well. The next time you have to do chicken wire, try it on the staircase, on an open staircase, you know, open flight of stairs. Like I did mine on my staircase coming into the basement. There's no railing there. So I have clear access to that staircase. And it, it worked out very, very well. So that's tip. Hopefully be useful to somebody, especially right now, everybody's getting ready. Some people are getting ready to actually grow chickens about because of the egg prices and because the avian flu scare where everybody's chickens are dying. Keep in mind, the benefit that you're going to get from having your own chickens in the city in Toledo, you can have six hens. Um, the benefit isn't going to be saving, you're not going to save money on eggs. Okay, saving money on eggs is a long run thought, like buying solar panels, you know. You know, everybody's buying these little solar panel taste taste platters where they're sampling it. The the cost is in buying the batteries, and everybody's a little too sticker shocked to commit to a thirty year savings plan for solar energy. But the eggs you're going to pay, you might end up paying more for your eggs because you're buying the feed. So you have to get creative about how to feed the chickens. For one thing. I have all the old timers know if you put a light out there, the light attracts bugs and the chickens eat the bugs. They gather around the light. So that's a good tip to know. Yeah, and they eat table scraps and all that stuff. So you're not going to save any money, but you will have a positive emotional, psychological health benefits from having the chickens. They're very affectionate. And uh, it's a very fun family thing to do, caring for chickens. Don't let people scare you about, you know, bird poop and all that stupid stuff. Keep in mind, we've been around for hundreds of thousands of years, <laughs> at least 50,000 growing animals. So there's never been some E. coli plague where everybody died because they were playing with the baby goats. So don't listen to all this city boy hype. Yeah. Okay, so we covered the children a little bit. Chicken wire, the pigeons, snuck in solar panels, the marijuana gardening thing, the honeybees. Um, let me put on another track and um, go check on my New York steaks. I got smoking on some applewood upstairs. This is a track called Life is Good from my album, The Bandana Brothers on Reverb Nation. Be right back, and then maybe we'll see if we can make a magical composition on one of these axes. Thank you. 
Yeah, and all this send stars crap. I don't do that send stars thing, so don't you guys think I'm bagging for money? Yeah. I see an eyeball peeking at me. Happy Valentine's Day. Hope you're doing good. Getting ready to experiment with the guitar in a second. I was just talking about some important things, some things I think are important. Pigeons are doing good. I'm going to read a quick poem here I want to share that's of value, I think, for people. slow day. It's been a slow week. Julia had a colonoscopy. They're sending some pops in for test. Let's see. Let's see if everything's okay. This was recorded in the Virgin Islands. album in the comments. Link to the poem that I'm going to read. This is actually a, isn't actually the actual document. This is a piece with notes in it. So anyway, I wrote a poem in response to Memphis Piano Joe's comment about um, how's life taking a toll on you or something like that and uh, my comment to him was my gifts for you are these words today still drying when you become to realize your spirit you see that all of life's sour grapes were for the wine oh yeah for the celebration to you Having lived and paid life's tolls. Oh, that's going to be some great stuff. Yeah. Now, receive all fruit where you may find it. Treasured lessons to be had. For calms a day. Oh, painful envy to witness wine that others have. Yeah, that special day. Yeah. When everybody gets to go see a St. Peter at the gate. Yeah. Yeah, that's the day that we're at, that some people are living for. Yeah, it's the people that are believing in good things. Or wanting to. The greater consciousness, yeah. So go back up to that creator. Yeah. Amazing creator. We'll see if we can be a creator. 
Now yeah, let's see if we can be a creator and see if we can create a composition on Rhonda. Just do it acoustically because I think my battery's dead. Close enough. Something like that. Yeah, it's just an idea. Yeah, it's just an idea. That's the thing. Where do all these great songs come from? You're not going to learn a great song by practicing Smoke on the Water. Yeah. No, you got to find it inside. Find your voice, they say. Find your voice, Native Americans. Send a child into the forest with a flute. Yeah, don't, don't come home until you find your voice. How am I going to find my voice? Well, that's, that's the ultimate question. How do I find my voice? Well, you're not going to find it with the rest of the people watching a football game. No. Studying sports statistics. Memorizing Rihanna's song lyrics. Oh, what a, what a sad state to see the, the path that society is going. Yeah, where's the, uh, where's the fathers of the nation? Yeah, even the guys, you know, guys have to admit, we have a men shortage in America. Yeah, yeah, you can't find a good friend, can't trust nobody. Everybody's gossiping, lying, talking behind your back. You all know, them guys, yeah, society's full of them. TV created them. Television, yeah, 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 that's why you you know, so the accents aren't such a big deal anymore. Oh, where's your accent? You know, that accent thing is down, you know, is dialed down. There's not many, everybody has the same accent. Yeah. Everybody sounds like they're from the same joint. Yeah. Everybody sounds like they're from the same prison. All exchanging the same banter that you hear in the prison yard all day long. That's America's become nothing but a nation full of inmates. Yeah, inmates. We have to separate ourselves. Yeah through the act of being. Yeah, be the man. Yeah, let's see them. Let's see the men. Yeah, the leaders, the guys with the ideas and the answers. Yeah, you can't find them. 
But everybody's a jailhouse lawyer, though, ain't they? Yeah, crack some books. Books, 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 books. Knowledge is power. You're not getting knowledge from the TV. Yeah. And when you do, you need to refer to books. Yeah. Nowadays, all the books that are being created <coughs> are effectively diluting the books available. So your odds of getting a good book, unless you've been referred to a particular author on a particular subject, you're going to find a lot of garbage. Yeah, garbage is hot. Yeah, the next one hand read. Yeah, science fiction, all this nonsense. Yeah, there are some thinkers out there. There are. And I found one or two. I did. I can't wait for the detonation. No, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to go check out my New Yorks, check on my pageants, and sort through this rotten fruit and sour grapes to make some more wine with. Yeah. Maybe I'll even put some denture adhesive in to eat with. I'll tell you what. Yeah, see, the thing about teeth, getting dentures, there's a whole new set of problems. Yeah. And the whole time you wanted your dentures so that you could have a mouthful of teeth, you'll find out when you get your dentures, you won't hardly ever wear them. Well, no, that's torture. It's a medieval torture device. Yeah, it is. Ask anybody who's got dentures. Yeah. Peace, love, you know who cares. Happy Valentine's Day. Rewind the show. Listen to what I had to say. Shoot me a question. Yeah, ask me anything. Stump the band. Take a shot. Yeah.